Design family. Stay tuned for our previously recorded message. May this recording be a blessing. Oh, my. 
Pastor Curry, pastor of the Yezai and Fair Baptist Church. It is a privilege and an honor to come to you every week and bring to you our live services. I am so grateful that you have partnered with us to be a part of the Yezai and Fair Baptist Church over the years. I want to take this opportunity to personally say to you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you do for us. On behalf of the Yezai and Fair Church family, we say welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome to Easy and Fair. We've come here today to give them all the praise. We welcome you to Easy and Fair. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, Ezai and Fair family. Here's this week's announcement. Prayer is key to our access to the Lord. Join us every Wednesday for our noonday prayer at 12 noon in the sanctuary. For more information, call the church at 302-652-9114, extension 110. Sunday school is held every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. in the fellowship hall. Join us as we explore the fundamentals of our faith. For more information, call the church at 302-652-9114, extension 110. If you are in need of transportation to the church, please call the church by Friday at 5 p.m. You must be able to provide proof that you are fully vaccinated and do not have a vehicle of your own. To schedule a pickup, call the church at 302-652-9114, extension 110. Our Warriors in the Word Zoom Bible Study is every Thursday at 7 p.m. The Bible study starts with praise and worship, which will prepare you for the study of God's Word. For more information, call the church at 302-652-9114, extension 110. Again, that's 302-652-9114, extension 110. Our National Prayer and Meditation Call occurs every Sunday and Wednesday morning at 5 a.m. This is our time as a people of God to hear an encouraging word and pray for miracles in every aspect of our lives. Join our National Prayer and Meditation Call directly dialing 319-527-2650. For more information, call the church at 302-652-9114, extension 110. Again, that's 302-652-9114. 9114 extension 110. We're back for our in person live worship celebrations in the sanctuary every Sunday at 9 a.m. and 11 30 a.m. There's power being in the presence of the Lord. Join us weekly as we worship together at 9 and 11 30 a.m. every Sunday morning. All worshipers are required to wear masks and have their temperature checked. For more information, call the church at 302 652 9114 extension 110 every sunday our 9 a.m worship celebration is live on facebook you can join us by going onto facebook and searching e zion fair baptist church or directly typing my e zion fair for more information call the church at 302 652 9114 extension 110 there are four ways to give at efbc one through cash app using dollar sign efbc two through zelle at trustees at ezionfairchurch.org three by mail 1400 b street wilmington delaware 19802 and four on the website myezionfair.org click the giving button for more information, call the church at 302-652-9114, extension 110.
Ezion Fair. Listen, before we get ready for the word of God, I just want to introduce to you, and many of you from Delaware know her very well, uh, Pastor Dawn Christopher, who is quite a preacher. She was our Women's Day uh, preacher this year, just a week or so ago. She brought a beautiful word from the Lord. It blessed us tremendously. And I promised you that I was going to share uh, the gifts and the talents and the anointing that God has given to us through her, her preaching. So I want you to enjoy this time of the preached word from Reverend uh, Pastor Dawn Christopher. Come on, let's praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, stand on your feet and put your hands together and give God praise. Somebody in the house say hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Over here, I want you to throw your head back and say glory. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. Oh, look at God. He's been moving. He's been moving. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. He's been moving. He's been moving by his spirit. What an awesome, what a wonderful, what a merciful, what a faithful, kind, good, and loving God he is. To the pastor of this awesome church, the Reverend Dr. Christopher T. Curry, and to Lady Rosa, good to see you both after so many years. I also want to acknowledge the Reverend Hines and her hospitality and her instructions in, in getting me in order and in line and in the right place to come here. I also want to thank in communications with Sister Sheila Woodland. God bless you and her kindness and also for the excitement of Sister Valerie Ashley this morning. And to all of the officers and members and friends, I bid you greetings in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if I've neglected any clergy, please forgive me. Please forgive me. It was not done purposely. I thank the Spirit of God for this opportunity today because God works in some awesome, awesome ways. And I can tell that there are people that have been anticipating this moment. There is a move in the atmosphere where somebody is just like, I need to hear you say something, God. You got to tell me something. And I say that because I, I, I am believing and feeling like someone really had to press your way to get here this morning. And whatever it is you're dealing with, it's one of those things, God, if you don't do it, it won't get done. And so my prayer this morning is that you are not disappointed. I looked at the information that I received and I know that your theme is unlocking the phenomenal woman that's in you. But I also have a message to this congregation at large and I believe that the word that I have will minister to men and women alike. Uh, I wanna share two segments of scripture with you and I know they're both going to be familiar. One comes out of 2 Samuel, the fifth chapter. I'm gonna begin at the 17th verse. It reads out of the Amplified Translation, when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, they all went up to find him, but he heard of it and he went down to the stronghold. The Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, go up, for I will surely deliver them into your hand. And David came to Baal Perazim, and he smote them there and said, the Lord has broken through my enemies before me, like the bursting out of great waters. So he called the name of that place Baal Perazim 
the Lord of breaking through. There the Philistines left their images and David and his men took them away. The Philistines came up again and spread themselves out in the valley of Rephaim. And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, you shall not go up, but go around behind them and come upon them over opposite the mulberry or balsam trees. And when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, then bestir yourselves for then the Lord has gone out before you to smite the army of the Philistines. And David did as the Lord commanded and smote the Philistines from Geba to Gezer. I want to focus particularly on verse 20. And David came to Baal Perazim and he smote them there and said, the Lord has broken through my enemies before me like the bursting out of great waters. So he called the name of that place Baal Perazim, the Lord of breaking through. And this morning, as we talk to unlocking the phenomenal woman in you, we want to minister from the topic, something's got to break. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come right now in that matchless name of Jesus, the name that is above all names of which every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. We come right now thanking and praising you for your awesomeness, for your faithfulness, for your consistency, for keeping your word, for manifesting your word, for always coming to the rescue, for granting us peace, for healing and deliverance, for leading and guiding us by your spirit. We come acknowledging your grace and your glory and the excellency of your spirit and who you are. And Father, as your maidservant stands to proclaim your word, continue to take hold of this atmosphere Fear, oh God, and send your anointing that I may minister with clarity of speech. God, whatever yokes are in this place, destroy them now in the name of Jesus. And I bind in the name of Jesus any foul spirits that may be undercover, anything lurking, anything that has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy, anything that would come to sabotage this moment. The blood of Jesus is against you. And I thank you, God, for your faithfulness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we speak and think in terms of what the word phenomenal means, we know that that is something that is extraordinary. That is something that is absolutely outside of the box. And when we apply that word to someone or something, we know that it has nothing to do with being your Joe average person or thing. A phenomenal woman is someone that does not line up with the ordinary. She's not somebody that marches to the beat of other people's drum, but she's somebody that knows how to make her own kind of music and sing her own kind of song. One of the things that I've learned about phenomenal women is that oftentimes they are mislabeled as disobedient. They are oftentimes mislabeled as women that don't want to go with the process or the flow. But the phenomenal woman has been through so much hell, has been through so many situations, has been through so many circumstances that she has gotten to a place in her life where she loves herself more more than the opinions of others. Come on, somebody. I know I got a phenomenal woman in this house. When you get to the place that you are a phenomenal woman, that means that you've been through some stuff with some folks and you've been through some situations and circumstances. You've been isolated. You've been rejected. You've been talked about. You've been mistreated. You may even be the black sheep of the family. Somehow or another, you find that you just don't fit in no matter where you go. Oh, you've tried. You've tried to fit in and you've tried to walk with others, but it don't feel right. You know, it just don't feel right. You feel like you're forsaking yourself. You feel like you're not doing yourself any justice. So you get old enough and you've been through enough and you're mature enough to just get to the place. I am what I am by the grace of God. And because, oh, how Hallelujah, because I am what I am by the grace of God, this is 
what you get and what you see is what you get no longer am I going to try to please you no longer am I going to try to make you feel good no longer am I going to try to kiss up to you no longer am I going to realign my schedule and my stuff for you it's my time now I've been through enough it's my time now I've earned this selfishness it's my time now oh women y'all sit down we didn't even get to the breakthrough yet y'all sit down sit down sit down sit down that was your setup that was your setup in 2nd Samuel the Bible says that the Philistines heard that David was anointed king over Israel and so they went looking for him now you understand that where David is concerned, the Philistines and, and Israel, that, that's an old enemy. The Bible even records for us how David defeated Goliath. And so they've been mad at him ever since. And I want you to understand that there are some folks in your past that you have contended with that just don't know how to drop it. It's been 20 years and they still mad. Life has changed. You've gotten older. You're growing in areas and there's still some folks that's got a problem with you. Here it is, God was bringing to fruition his word to David, which meant he was promoting him, and the enemy heard about it. I want all of you phenomenal folks that's sitting out here right now, don't you think that your enemies don't know when God is blessing you? Come on, let's just tell the truth and shame the devil. They stalking your Instagram. They stalking your Facebook page. You don't think they looking at your page if you don't have it private? Or they talking to somebody that knows you, trying to find out what's going on with you because see, secretly they want you to fail. Secretly, they never wanted you to succeed. Secretly, they never wanted you to get ahead. Secretly, they never wanted you to have no money as long as they thought that you were beneath them they were doing fine but as soon as God started pouring oil in your life your enemies got angry and the more God blesses you the angrier they get <clears throat> this is why I'm saying you don't worry about people no more you got to do what God has called you to do and learn how to love yourself and do what you need to do for yourself it's time to stop satisfying other folks this is some of the problem in the church we live for other members we live for other officers we live for other folks instead of having our own relationship with God just because somebody's on one organization or in one group doesn't mean that you got to be there too what did God say to you how is God leading you what are your gifts too many people with phenomenal potential are being led by folks in the church telling them what they ought to be doing instead of asking God what do you want me to do oh hold on a minute we, we ain't get to the good part yet so David was smart enough when he heard about it to go down into the stronghold and the stronghold was his place of defense his place of protection for those of us that understand what it's like when there is an enemy our stronghold is in our prayer closet 
That's the place that we go down into and we shut everybody else out. It's the place of our defense where I can be 100 with God. You hear what I'm saying? I don't have to keep no secrets from God. I can tell him everything about me. I can tell him the good, the bad, and the ugly because I know the God that I serve already knows me. I don't have to have no secrets. I don't have to hide anything. I can tell him that I missed the mark. I can tell him that I fell short and it doesn't change God's mind about me. I'm so glad for a prayer closet. I'm so glad for the word of God I'm so glad I can speak the Word of God I'm so glad that the Word of God is true I'm so glad that the Bible says heaven and earth are pass away but not God's Word I'm so grateful that his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path I'm so glad Jesus says speak the word only I'm so glad for the power of God that when I speak the word God hears me and he watches over his word to perform it I'm so glad that his word will not return unto me void but it will prosper and accomplish where it's been sent I'm so glad for the stronghold I'm so glad for the secret place I'm so glad for the Holy Ghost I'm so glad that there is a place that I can go where God will keep me is anybody listening in the house today When David got into the stronghold, he inquired of the Lord. And this is where many of us miss it. Soon as somebody starts messing with you, flesh rises up. And you start responding out of your flesh. Oh, she don't know me. She don't know who she messing with. Huh, huh, what miss me? See, we only one prayer away from what we used to be. Let's just tell the truth. We're one prayer, one prayer away. I don't know about y'all, but for me, I got to stay right up under God. Do you hear me? Because it's always something trying you. I got to stay right up under God. Sometimes I'm holding him so tight. My God, if I were to visualize it, he's probably dragging me out on the hem of his garment. He went and inquired of the Lord before he said or did anything. Shall I go up to and wait a minute, sorry. Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? He had to know that he had some backup. Those of us that have lived long enough, been around a lot of folks that said, I got you, I got you, girl. And then you look around, ain't nobody standing behind you. And it's like the cheese and the farmer in the dell, you standing alone. He had to make sure that he wasn't getting into a fight that was going to defeat him and that the power of God would be there to carry him through. David knew this was not going to be an ordinary fight because David needed God to do something powerful. He had to petition the God of the breakthrough because there are some obstacles that we come in life that are hard to penetrate. There's some things that we're pressing against and there's some things that we can't seem to move and I don't know about you but there's times I'm praying God this thing is not getting fixed God this thing is not moving I don't understand what's happening how come I can't get it done I'm praying God I'm fasting God I'm standing God I'm speaking the word and it seems like the enemy is triumphing over me God have you turned your back on me God do you hear what I'm saying God what is this is it something that I've done is it something that I missed why can't I get this and it seems to go on and on and over and over and on and on and on and the Bible says that when you've done all to stand stand still and see the salvation of the Lord Stand still and see what God will do for you. The Spirit of the Lord 
responded to David and told him, go ahead. Because I'm going to deliver them into your hands. I'm going to do it. And David had to know by faith. He had to trust and believe the God that he served. That this thing was so. And the Bible says that surely the Lord delivered the Philistines into his hands. And God did it like a mighty rushing water. The spirit of the living God sent me here today. To tell some of you that are on the precipice. And some of you that are at the fork roads of God. God unlocking something in your life to expect the unexpected. God said he's about to do a suddenly in your life. God said, but I need you to keep your eyes on me. I don't want you coming out of your flesh. I don't want you looking to the right or to the left. I want you to keep your eyes stayed on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. I know it's been a long time. I know you've been through a whole lot. I know that you felt like giving up. I know you wanted to throw in the towel. I know folks have laughed at you. I know folks made fun of you. I know they scorned you. I know you lost some so-called friends in the process. But God said, I'm about to move in your life. God told me to tell you he's about to bust a move. He's getting ready to turn that situation around. He's getting ready to flip the script. Come on, somebody. David then knew that he was able to overtake them. And he did what God told him to do. And they left out so hurriedly that they left their idols. And David and his men snatched up the idols. But let me tell you how many of you know that when an enemy comes against you to try to keep you from being successful, that he don't just give up on the first round. How do you know that the enemy is always lurking around? We never completely get rid of him. We deal with him in seasons. And there are some seasons that are long and there's some seasons that are short. Well, the Philistines came up again because the enemy specializes in aggravating. The enemy specializes in agitating. The enemy specializes in nitpicking. Then the enemy specializes when he can't get to you, then he gonna mess with somebody close to you. If he can't get to them, then he's gonna mess with something that affects you. He's always working and moving. And that's why we learn when we're down in the stronghold. David then went back again. Lord, shall I pursue after them? And God switched up the plan. God said, no, don't do it that way. I'm going to take you another way. My God, my God, my God. And this is what the Bible says. That when David inquired of the Lord, he said, don't go up, but go around. Go behind them and come upon them over the opposite way. Let me tell you what. God knows everything and he specializes at doing a drive-by on the enemy. Come on, somebody. He knows how to take the enemies unaware. They'll be so busy looking at you, trying to see what kind of move you're going to make. And God is already moving from another direction. Some people expect you to act the way that you used to act back in the day. But when you've been in the stronghold, you learn how to hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle. You learn how to stand when you've done all this stand. And sometimes through that process, we get hurt. And sometimes through that process, we're abandoned. And sometimes through that process, we're disappointed. And sometimes through that process, we fall short. So what do we do when we miss the mark? We don't sit up there and, and worry about out or waddle in our tears or say oh I messed up and God's not going to bless me. We learn how to spring back. We learn how to stand straight. We learn how to wobble baby, wobble baby, wobble baby, wobble. Wobble baby, wobble baby, wobble baby, wobble. That's what we learn how to do. Wobble baby. Because wobbles weave but they don't fall down. Come on somebody. We're talking this morning about the God of breakthrough. And I know you came here today saying something's got to break. I'm catching hell on every hand. It's in my house. It's in my family. It's on my job. It's with my friends. It's in my community. It's with my health report. It's in my mind. I've been battling in my mind. I've been feeling like things are going on. I've been feeling like I'm losing it but God told me to tell you something's about to break something's about to explode something's about to move something's about to stir God is moving right now and if 
you believe that God is moving, put your hands together and praise his name. Open up your mouth and give God glory. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Clap your hands, all ye people. Come on and give him praise. Come on and magnify his name. His name is worthy. His name is worthy. My God. So many of us were under the impression that a phenomenal woman was someone that achieved only great heights. No, a phenomenal woman is a delivered woman. That's who the phenomenal woman is. She's a delivered woman. She's been delivered from herself and she's been delivered from other folks. A phenomenal woman has peace. The peace of God that passes all understanding, that keeps her heart and her mind in Christ Jesus. The phenomenal woman knows that she speaks the word only and she's led by the spirit of the living God. A phenomenal woman doesn't care what everybody else is doing over there. I'm going to stay over here where God is and I'm going to wait on him. Because sometimes God doesn't answer the phenomenal woman's prayers right away. And sometimes you got to wait and 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 you got to wait. And sometimes days turn to weeks, turn to months, turn to years and years and years. But guess what I've learned in this time that I've been walking with God that it may take him a long time, but he's not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he ought to repent I'm at the place now that if God said it don't come to me with no other stuff cause if he says it I know he'll do it and I know he gonna bring it to pass I don't care if I gotta stand by myself I don't care if you make fun of me no more I done been through those days I done been through folks talking about me I done been through people laughing at me laugh on folks laugh on because I believe God and I trust him something has got to shake something has got to break something has got to move believe it receive it and know that God is doing it not he will do it he's already working on it not it might happen it's already happening and in the process of time he's going to bring it to fruition somebody give him glory 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 give him glory I want you to give him glory let me tell you why because for those of you that pressed your way to get here you were supposed to hear this word you might even say to your friend you know what I don't know I just I, I don't I'm not I'm not feeling it today you were supposed to be here and just as sure as I'm standing here saying this to you, something in your life is about to break. And it's gonna happen suddenly because there are some relationships that need to get fixed. Let me tell you, there's some mother-daughter relationships. I feel it. There's some, and, and some hurt folks, there's some mother-daughter relationships, there's some sibling relationships. There's somebody that, that had a problem with a very good friend, your BFF. God's getting ready to break that thing up. See, because what happens is we get angry at who we see standing in front of us and we don't know that the real devil is in operation and he can use anybody. My God, my God. I got I to gotta listen to what the spirit of God is saying. I know we had just have a couple more minutes and I, I'm going to get you out of here, but 
I cannot get my eyes off of you, sweetheart, in the orange dress. Can you just come and stand right down here if you don't mind, please? Because I see the hurt all over you. Just, just stand right at the bottom. Because there's been rejection. There's been abandonment. You suffered losses. And you feel like you're all alone. Sweet Jesus. Everybody stretch your hands towards her, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch this precious young lady. Every time she turns around, it's a fight. It's, it's almost as if she's saying, can, is, can I get some peace sometime? Can I just get a break sometime? And she's been taken advantage of, Lord. Father, but I know that you are a restorer. And everything the locust is eating, the canker worm, the palmer worm, everything they came to destroy, you will restore. I hear God telling me to tell you, no longer are you going to be forsaken. No longer. God said in not very many days, he's turning things around. He's turning it around. And God said, lift your hands up right now, right where you are, sweetheart. Lift your hands up. Just lift your hands up and do me a favor. Just turn around in a circle. Turn around. Just demonstrate. Just demonstrate the turning around. And Father, loose her right now in the name of Jesus. By the power of that name that is above all names, I plead the precious blood of Jesus from the crown of her head down to the sole of her feet. And I thank you, Father, that every tear you're taking right now and you're capturing them in a bottle and they're going up as a memorial unto the spirit of the living God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that joy is coming into her life. Unspeakable joy. Ah, Lord Jesus, replace her mourning for death dancing oh rasha kando robosare de de oh baby just keep your hands up and right where you are all over this sanctuary lift your hands up i don't know what your needs are but the god i serve is impeccable and he's a detailed god and he will minister to you right where you are all of the physical conditions the emotional conditions all of the relational situations somebody with job finances education is somebody trying to get in a house? My God, my God, my God. There is nothing too hard for God. And Father, I pray right now for a financial breakthrough. God, you promised me that if I asked you for it, you would do it. And so God, I'm calling forth down out of the heavenlies that you would send a financial breakthrough into the lives of those that are standing in need I command the finances of heaven to pour out right now in the lives of those that are standing in need God I give you praise in advance for what everyone whatever their situation is is about to receive we give you praise we give you honor and we give you glory through Jesus Christ our Lord amen amen and as they're helping this young lady to her seat if there's anybody in here that does not yet know Jesus Christ for pardoning of sins, then I encourage you right now to make your confession known. The Bible says if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. If you're out there. My, 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 my. As I shared with you, the Lord blessed us in a very, 
very powerful way. The people of God were blessed, unlocking the phenomenal woman in you. I just want to add, unlock the phenomenal man in you, unlock the phenomenal person in you, because it becomes important that we, the people of God, recognize we are only using one eighth of, of the strength, the power, and the anointing and ability that God has given to us. Why don't you unlock that, 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 that anointing that's in your life that you may grow and flow in the things of God. It becomes important, saints, and the woman of God did a very good job. Thanks to Pastor Christopher for doing such a wonderful job with our women. Ah, oh, man, I, I'm still I'm still enjoying the word. Everyone brings the word of God in their own way, and I've learned to respect people's delivery, whether they like to hum, whether they like to shout, whether they like to talk softly. As long as the word of God is coming forward, that's what I enjoy. The Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will remain forever. And Dr. Dawn Christopher did a phenomenal job with bringing us the word. I hope you enjoyed it today. Why don't you come and visit us here at Ezion Fair? The Lord is doing some mighty and magnificent things. Listen, the word of God has been preached, is being preached on a weekly basis here at Ezion Fair. I don't want you to miss out. For those of you who have allowed COVID to get you in the house and make you a couch potato, it's time to leave Facebook. It's time to leave all of these streams and come on into the house of the Lord. The Bible says, oh, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. We need to come together so we can pull off your anointing and you can pull off our anointing so that we'll be able to grow stronger as a people of God. Join us every Sunday. We have two services, one starting at 9 a.m. every Sunday, and then we have another service at 1130. Join us. We are very friendly people. We love, we welcome you. We want you to come and be a part of the worship experience. We're still wearing our masks. So we ask that you would please wear your mask when you come to worship. Many people are just showing up because other places like the mall and other places you don't have to wear masks. We don't want us to find ourselves with COVID. COVID is still real. So please wear your mask when you come. But beyond that, we want you to come. Let's magnify the Lord together. Don't forget that we have early morning prayer, 5 a.m. every Sunday and every Wednesday. Two to 300 individuals are a part of that time of prayer and meditation. Join us. Call the church if you need to to get the prayer call online it's a direct call in every Sunday and every Wednesday. We are still on vacation with our Bible study. I've enjoyed Bible study and I'm going to kind of miss the saints who are getting on with us every week, but we're going to be off until September. But I ask that you would please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or even on YouTube at Ezion Fair Baptist Church. This is the church that love you and ain't a thing you can do about it. I appreciate every moment we have together and I pray that this broadcast today have blessed your life have touched your life and have given you renewed renewed hope in the Lord Jesus Christ as he's coming back for his own church. Until the next time we get together, may the Lord God bless you real good. Mm -hmm.